Isaiah 49, Ephesians, the 49th book of the Bible. Listen, O isles, unto me, God, and hearken ye people from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb. Jeremiah 1 5, Matthew 1 21. From the bowels of my mother has he made mention of my name. He has made my mouth like a sharp sword. Second Advent. In the shadow of his hand has he hid me and made me a polished shaft. And his quiver that withholds arrows has he hidden has he hid me. And said to me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught, and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord, and my work with my God. And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb, to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him, Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore and preserve of Israel. So there's coming a time when God's going to get Israel back. He sent a servant we're reading about born of the womb for a reason to gather Israel out and at one point it's you know what I've done is vain all the strength I put into it it's vain glorious and eyes of the Lord and my God shall be my strength and he said it is a light thing that thou should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, to raise them up, and to restore the, the preserve of Israel, to bring them back. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentile. Now, who are we talking about? That thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. We're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. He came unto his own, his own received them not. But when he comes back the second time, he's coming for, for Israel. The end of Jacob's trouble will be over. It will be a time of redemption, a, a time of salvation for the Jew, for God to give them a new heart and write upon their heart the Holy Spirit. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to him whom men despise, Isaiah 53, to him... The nations abhor it. They're angry with him. Uh, Psalms chapter 2. To a servant of rulers. Kings shall see and rise. Princes also shall worship. So not all are going to be damned. In, con in condemnation when Jesus Christ comes back. There are going to be nations that did help Israel. Even though they don't, they're not aware of it. And they're going to go into the millennium as a as a present for their deeds of doing right to the Jews. Because of the Lord that because of the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and He shall choose thee. Kings shall arise. Well, it says in Revelation one that we are kings, those that are saved. It speaks of Princes, David's going to be a prince under the Lord Jesus Christ. You got the millennium in verse 7. Thus saith the Lord, In acceptable time have I heard thee, and in the day of salvation have I helped thee. I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people, Israel, to establish the earth to cause it to inherit the desolate heritage. That thou mayest say to the prisoners, Go forth. To them that are in darkness, show yourself. They shall feed in the ways, and their pastures shall be in all high places. They shall not hunger nor thirst. Revelation 7.16 Neither shall the heat nor the 
No, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. Oh, if it's at the tribulation and millennial time, that sun is going to be more than what it is today, seven times. For he that has mercy on them shall lead them. The shepherd leading the sheep. John chapter 10. Even by the springs of water shall he guide them. Yea, though I, uh, the shepherd's song. He's going to guide them to still waters. Sheep are afraid of running water. Psalm 23. And I will make all my mountains away. And my highways shall be exalted. And that's how we started Isaiah with Matthew. Make the crooked way straight, bring the mountains down, uphold the valleys. Behold, these shall come from afar, and lo, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Sinem. Sinem, however you want to say it. Sing, O heavens. Well, there's principalities and powers right now in the heavens. <clears throat> and be joyful, O earth. And break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have mercy upon his afflicted. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me, and my Lord has forgotten me. 1 Samuel 1 19. And right now it does seem like that. You look at Zion right now, listen, there's the dumb of the rock. There's one piece of wall. There's broken down city. The Catholics are running it. Uh, the Arabs are running through it. Some Jews are there. Not all the Jews are there. There's no feasting. There are missiles come flying in from foreign countries. And when they fire missiles, everyone gets upset. Can a woman forget her suckling child? Jeremiah 2.32 That she should not have compassion on the son of her womb. Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. There are some women who have forgotten their children. The children are burdens. But God says, I won't forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the pawns of my hand. Now, we've been talking about graven images. And God reaches out and says, listen, I have graven in my hand. Jesus Christ will forever hold the marks in his hand for the sacrifice that he done upon Calvary Street. Thy wall. Well, I think there's a wall now. Thy walls. Thy walls are continually before me. The children shall make haste. Thy destroyers and they that made thee waste shall go forth of thee. They're right there in the midst of them today. Lift up thy eyes round about, and behold, all these gather themselves together and come to thee. As I live, saith the Lord, thou shalt surely clothe thee with them all as with an, oil, with an ornament, decoration. A bind them on thee as a bride does do it. For thy wastes and thy desolate places, and there is plenty of right now, the land of thy destruction shall even now be too narrow by reason of the inhabitants. And they that swallow thee up shall be far away to the lake of fire. The children which thou shalt have after those after thou hast lost the other shall say again in thine ears. The place is too straight for me. Give place to me that I may dwell. Now this may be so of Petra. Thou shalt say in thy, thou shalt say in thy heart, Who has begotten me? These seeing I have lost my children, going to be death and desolate, a captive and removing to and fro. Now this may be describing Israel on the run from the Antichrist. Being killed. Dying in the way. Famine. 
Bro! The place is too straight for me. Good place to me that I may dwell. Then shalt thou say in thy heart, Who has begotten me thee? Seeing I have lost my children, and I am desolate and captive and removing to and fro. And who has brought up thee? There's going to be other people. Behold, I was left alone. These, where had they been? Now, it's a possibility they're going to be the few. The Bible says two are going to be in bed, one's going to be gone, two are going to be grinding, and they're going to be running. If this is the context, they're going to be running to sell a pizza, and it's not going to be many. But when they finally get to the place where God has prepared a place for them, there's going to be more of them than they think that there are. So they're not going to run in masses. That would be stupid. They run in complete masses down one, the Antichrist is going to be able to find them. They're not going to go down as an army. They're going to just go down in groups. For thus, for thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people. And they shall bring thy sons in their arms. And thy daughters shall be carried upon their so shoulders. That's interesting. And kings shall be thy nursing father, and their queens thy nursing mother. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth. Lick up the dust of thy feet. Thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Coming a time when the when the Jews are going to be searching for God. They're going to expect God to do something. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive delivered? But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with, with him that com, contendeth with thee. I will save thy children. So God is always against those that are against the Jew. Now Nebuchadnezzar took everything away from Jerusalem. But Cyrus said here. Bring it back. And use it for God's service. And there was even a, uh, I don't know if you call it a pole, but there was a summation of everything that Cyrus gave them. A numbering, an amount, a balance, an account of, of all that Cyrus gave that Nebuchadnezzar took. And it ended back up in Jerusalem. And it ended back up in the temple built by Ezra. Now it's interesting. When a new temple is built and a new temple is going to be built. Is there somewhere in this world right now. The vessels. That disappeared when Titus came in. How they're going to be found if so now we know the ark we know the prayer altars in heaven according to Revelation I don't know and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh now cannibalism is when you eat other humans here they're going to eat, now this could be their own literal bodies or their own flesh as in, you know, I'm going to use this as an illustration, but, you know, Germans eating Germans and Italians eating Italians and Chinese eating Chinese. That could be it or your own flesh means I start eating myself or I'm eating the flesh of my own natives. The offspring. And that's nothing new in the Old Testament. That's what Israel was doing when they were when they were in famine. 
The woman goes up to the king and says, you know, we, we boiled my baby today and ate him. Now we're going to go get my, our, my, my friend's baby. She ate him. When Nebuchadnezzar came in, Lamentation speaks about eating the fruit of the womb. You might be having your brother for dinner. Listen, if this is after the millennium, if this is after Jacob's trouble, those against the Jews, how were they identified? You had to receive a mark. A Jew that did not receive the mark, and the mark is against the law for the Jew, could not eat unless somebody would help him. So someone having the mark and getting food would not help the Jew. God said, okay, fine. I'll give you your own flesh to eat. They shall be made to eat the, the mark. I don't know. Let's put that in a garbage can. But, and they shall be drunken with their own blood. Why? They've been drinking the blood of the Jews. Listen. Let's get the plain simple fact down. There's a church that believes when they drink the Lord's Supper, they are literally drinking the blood of Jesus Christ. It's not the blood of Jesus Christ. But if they think they're literally drinking the blood of Jesus Christ, according to John chapter 1, they are drinking Jewish blood. So, in the tribulation, Jacob's trouble, they're going to be drinking literal Jewish blood. Fresh from the guillotine. They may have a mass at the guillotine to have the blood of the Jews. Why not the blood of Jesus Christ? Why won't they have that in the tribulation? Because their Jesus Christ is going to be sitting on the mercy seat or wherever the holy of holies of the temple. I, I'm the one. And you're sure not going to drink your God's blood when he's sitting right there. Listen, the drinking of the Jewish blood or Jesus blood, whatever you want to call it, it's Jewish blood. That's what they proclaim in their focus, focus, fee, fi, fo, fum. That's exactly what they're going to do in the tribulation period. Verse 26 says that's what they do. Mystery Babylon holds a cup, and the cup is the, is the cup of the Lord's saints. As with sweet wine. Well, look at that. It's the, that's the reference that Paul uses for the Lord's Supper. That's when Jesus sat down with the disciples in the upper room. He said, take this cup and drink it. He didn't say what was in the cup to drink. He said the cup. And all flesh shall know that I am... That all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Not all flesh knows that today. Especially for the Jews. There are churches out there, there are religions that are against the Jews. That say every, every promise given to the Jew is to the church. That's a doctrine of some. Jo Jehovah Witnesses have taken from Jew Jews and applied it to themselves. You know, it's funny. The Jehovah Witnesses are the 144,000 in the tribulation period. is spoken of three and a half years and three and a half years of great tribulation. It's been a long seven years since they've been in bonded. Check out what year they were established and add seven and find out how off they are. Because those 144,000 don't show up into the tribulation period. Well, I'm sorry, but where's those locusts that sting you and that, you know, you're going to want to have death and can't have death? You're going to close up all the life insurance companies. See how foolish it is? In the tribulation period, they're going to be eating their own flesh, they're going to be drinking their own blood. Towards the end, they're going to run out of Jews, maybe, for their sacrifice. Because the ones that, that get away won't be there to be sacrificed. 
The Bible speaks of Jews having their heads cut off. I don't know much about guillotine, and I've, I've searched some facts, but one of the things that is sliced when your head, when you're, when you get your neck pierced off, is the juggler vein, and if your head is still attached, and I've seen studies, I've seen videos, I've read first aid, if you get your juggler vein cut in your neck. Man, you need to have extreme pressure put on that wound if you can get to a medical. Because that thing gushes. I would assume, maybe, I'm assuming, if your neck is sliced, removed, that jugular vein just put a cup up to it. And then you won't need to go feed 5 foam foam because it will be literal Jewish blood. As this whole chapter talks about the Jews leaving, running, running out of them. And there's going to be some kings and some queens that are going to take care of them. They're going to nourish them. And they don't even know what they're doing, Jesus says. Pity. Sorrowful. These poor people. And yet you find in World War II there were people that still, no matter how much the wrath of the Nazi were upon the Jews, there were people that helped them and took care of them. Now you want to find something interesting? You want to study in history? I don't know how you can do it. But go back into the World War II and find out those families that did help the Jews. And find out what the Gentiles that helped the Jews. What happened to them after, after the war was over, you wonder? I bet you God blessed them. I bet you God blessed those that helped those Jews escape and get out of Nazi hands. And maybe they even turned to the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. I don't know. I'm just... I will bless them that bless thee. That's what I'm going by for that verse. For those that helped the Jews in World War II. For those that helped the Jews in the tribulation period, they get access into the millennium under the reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is their reward there. So, and those that are cursed, the Jews, verse 26. They get no blessing. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, they get judged as a goat nation, and they end up in the lake of fire, which is said not far off. Well, what's that mean? The Dead Sea area opens up as a lake of fire in the millennium. That's not far away from Israel. It's a hop, skip, and a jump to go jump into the lake. 